Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to start building some modern armor and today we're going to be building the M1A2 TUS2 variant from Academy. I want to thank Academy. Academy was kind enough to provide some samples of this kit to build for our videos. So it looks like to be a great kit. It's a 100% all brand new mold. So let's get started on it. Before we get started on it, I wanted to just point out this uh, this kit has four manuals in it. And at first it kind of scares you thinking, wow, there's four manuals, there's a lot of parts. But actually not. They are just really large pictures inside the uh, the manuals to really show what's happening. Uh, I give Academy credit. This is very, very easy, simple to follow instructions. There's a lot of little parts, but you can see the size of the pictures and it's very, very clear where each item goes. And then as you get further on in the, the books, after I've looked them over, some areas are just strictly for certain versions, since this is a three version kit. The wheels of the kit go together really well, and Academy is included inside of the kit these clear um, hubs. And the reason they're in clear is because the actual real vehicle has a clear outer hub on it. And this is so that you can see the inside fluid levels inside each one of the wheels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those off for right now and we're going to attach those after we've painted up the vehicle and then we can dirty them up a little bit and it should look pretty good. The uh, tub of the vehicle is not a bathtub type one, it's actually individual pieces, but it's got some good strong stiffeners in between and actually once you get everything all lined up the thing kind of clicks together so there's a real strong fit uh, and shouldn't be any problems at all putting it together. Now there's three distinctive types of suspension arm that you want to put together and two of them are only minor differences on them so what I would recommend doing as you see here is laying out the suspension completely and getting them in order and you have to work from the back of the tank forward or, you'll, or the wheels will never work over each other so if you do it that way you should have no problems at all. The rubber band tracks that we're going to use in this kit, and that's mainly because most of the track is hidden by the side skirts, uh, they're nicely detailed. One unusual thing that I haven't seen before is that you actually glue a regular piece of styrene to the rubber band tracks to, to connect them together. So I put a little extra super glue in this area right here because the rubber bands are going to be under a little tension and I don't want them pulling out later on. This is a, just a little building tip as we go forward. In the instructions it uh, tells you to put the wheels on first and then all of these little brackets. Now although these brackets right here, these long ones were easy to put on, it would be much easier to put these brackets on, this one and that one and that one, if the wheels weren't already on. So I might recommend as you go forward to put those on first, then put the wheels on. You'll have a much easier time at it. And the back of this attaches real easy enough. And you might notice too, I had another little glue spill. Wasn't expecting the bottle to be open, which I had left. And that's what it does to your cutting board.
Now in this step right here, they, they request that you put in the vision blocks into the front uh, piece here. I'm gonna leave those out and that's because when we go to paint it, it's gonna be that much easier to paint. So we won't actually glue this into place. We'll just lay it down there like you've seen a lot of times I have my hatches that kind of blow around. But that way we won't have to worry about uh, masking over that. And that's going to go for the same for the lenses that go in the front on the uh, lights here as well. Okay, no, the step next is requires us to glue the body down to the uh, to the chassis here or the top of the body to the chassis. And normally I wouldn't do that to make it easy getting the tracks on and off, but I've noticed that the tracks will come off fairly easily like that. Okay, as we attach the tow bar on this, it comes, hopefully you can see this piece, I'm gonna partially put it inside here, that little pin. Now, that little pin, what I might recommend is before you try shoving it in there, you might wanna sand around the entire edge uh, to smooth it out really really well because it, it's really tight fit and you'll find that if you're trying to use the tweezers to push it in it'll have a tendency to almost disappear on you by firing off so uh, if you see how we go to get it like this get it just in and then we should be able to push it straight in and then using the uh, pair of tweezers to finish it off and that way you won't break it or lose it or anything like that. And so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now this kit gives you three options to do either the Tusk 1, Tusk 2, or just uh, an M1A2 uh, version 2. I'm going to go ahead and do the Tusk 2, which has both the block armor and this other applique armor on top of that. Now you have to go ahead and pre-drill the holes from behind. Now they do give you indicator marks on the back which make it real easy. But this way they can get two, two different variations out of the same mold. So we'll just... After I show you all this area right in here too, I will go back and add a little more glue into some areas to keep it all nice and sturdy. And then this piece is going to glue right on into here. And then you have your front bumpers that are protecting all of that and your back one. That'll glue right into there. Now I'm going to turn off the camera so I can get in there a little tighter with it and glue it all together. Okay, I've gone ahead and finished sanding all the uh, side armor down and I haven't, I just put it in place here to show you what it's going to look like. It actually has a bunch of little pins in here. Now you don't want to glue this on yet because if you do that it's going to make it really difficult to paint and detail the wheels as well as the tracks that we'll put on later on. And like I said, I've gone ahead and done both of these so we'll just leave these aside as little separate units that we'll paint up later. Okay, Academy includes a three-piece slide molded barrel, so you get a lot of nice detail. There's only a small amount of cleanup that you have to do on it, and that's when uh, the sanding block with the foam insert comes in really handy. It takes down it nicely without taking down too much, uh, making a flat spot on it. And that's going to click right into there. And We'll just put some glue on it and do a little more sanding on it and there's your entire completed barrel. Then after you let the barrel dry it's going to slide right in here. 
You also want to make sure that you tuck that wiring in. And then you can go ahead. We'll go ahead and glue this in a minute. You'll be able to just snap this right in and that'll wedge it all together. I've also gone ahead and glued on the photo etch panels on the front here. They had a little bit of a, of a flex to them, so they can be a little bit uh, difficult putting on, but if you make sure you get a little glue in each one of the corners and then a nice little mount in the middle, it holds pretty well. Okay, as we put all the little uh, parts on top of the turret here, there's a lot of glass block that we need to put in, and you really want to watch and see watch what you're doing so as you go forward it'll be a lot easier for painting for example on these right here these actually I was when I was doing some test fitting these little front plates actually snap into place and they're snapped in tight enough that we can hold them like that paint them then pull them apart later on and put the glass block inside and that way we're not having to try to mask off the inside on that uh, other parts that are just have a glass block insert that go through the back, we can glue that part into place and after we're done painting. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. So you just have to look at all the different little things like these are going to be a pop-in. Uh, some of these are just hard plates that we'll glue all this stuff in as well too. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting all these pieces together. And like I said, I've kind of scoped out where I think I need to, uh, if I had to mask, but I think we're not going to have to mask any of this. We can put it together, paint it, uh, and then disassemble or just pop in glass plates later on. Okay, and one other thing too is we don't want to glue this down yet uh, for the commander's area because we still have to slide the uh, glass in from the bottom. So we're just going to put this, it kind of fits firmly into place right there, good enough for we can paint it. going to attempt to show you guys how the baskets are put together. It's very, very fine detail and a lot of sanding and things of all. Uh, also because the camera's in front of where I'm actually working on right here, I'm going to try to put this together and show you. If not, I might have to just do it separately because it is such fine work. But Academy did a very, very nice job putting this together going to be I have a little more sanding to do I just thought it might be better to glue some of these pieces up and brace some of them a little bit so they don't flex as much so we'll go ahead and try doing that right now but yes very very nice detail
Okay, now we're going to attach the uh, turret bustle rack here, and I was just dry fitting it a minute ago. In fact, it fits so well, it actually clicked into shape and almost couldn't get it off to get glue on it. Also, I'm going to attach this little box first. I think this will be easier putting on now rather than waiting till we get that in glued in shape. So this is just going to snap basically, coming at it from the top like this. And then we just line up the bottom pegs here. And there's the click I was telling you about. And we'll just go ahead and put some glue on that and make sure it stays that way. And then the side racks are just going to pop right into shape right here. And then we'll go ahead and put some glue to make sure that all stays connected on it. But actually you can see that it lines up pretty close to perfect without even gluing it yet. So we'll just do a little messing around with that and get that to stick well. And now we're going to just put all the last of the little uh, armor pieces and little boxes and things like that that go on this side pretty straightforward. Actually that one doesn't go there, this goes right here. get up and tight in there with some glue. Camera's kind of in my way, but you'll get a general idea how it's gonna look. So there's the right side of the vehicle all decked out. Uh, that little hole is actually gonna get a piece of track, but we're gonna paint that separately. Uh, that's everything but the uh, armored glass that goes inside of all that stuff, which I, like I told you, we'll be putting in separate later on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and complete the other side because it's pretty much identical to this one, and we'll move on to some of the next steps. Okay, uh, principal construction is now complete. Uh, a lot of these parts, like I told you earlier, are just snapped into place right now and they're gonna come off as we go to paint it. So I just wanted to give you a general idea of what the kit looks like. It looks pretty good to me. Uh, no, no problems with putting it together. Everything was pretty straightforward. Uh, a lot of little parts, but nothing that I think anyone can handle if they're willing to take their time on it. So overall, a very, very nice kit. Okay, first step we're going to do, as usual, we're going to spray it with XF69 Natal Black over the entire vehicle. Yeah, I'm taking to me as XF59 and I added just a little bit of white to it just to brighten it a little bit. And now we're going to go over all of the uh, surfaces of the tank. Okay, after I completely painted it with the uh, dark yellow white mixture, uh, I went over the entire model uh, lightly, but not like a dust coat, but co a little bit heavier than what we normally do at the end of just regular uh, XF57 buff. And hopefully you can see in the, the video there that how we're already starting to get the, the discoloration in the different paneling, and that was from doing our black and white undercoat on it. So it's starting to look really good. So I'm going to go ahead and spray the entire thing with uh, lusterless flat coat. That's going to seal everything in. And then we can go back over it, start putting the decals on and doing some of the weathering and some more highlight painting. Okay, uh, what I've gone ahead and done here so far is there was only a couple of decals that I was going to put on this, like the name and then some of the uh, the numbering on the back right there, which I put on and I need to actually clear coat again to seal them in completely. 
I've gone over and done some of the little bit of minor detail painting on little areas here and there. Plus, after I dull coated the entire thing, I went over some of the highlighted panels with a little buff to kind of make them pop out a little bit more. Now the next step we're going to do is we're I'm not going to overly weather this vehicle, but I am going to do a slight little black pin wash in some of the back panels. Plus we're also going to weather up the tracks and we lower road wheels with a little desert dust to kind of blend that all in together. So uh, let's start with the tracks next. Okay, now we're going to start weathering the tracks. We're going to start off by using the desert dust as our fixer and start going along kind of heavy because I want it to really soak into all the little nooks and crannies on the vehicle here. And then using light sienna as our dusting powder, kind of put it making sure you're getting it all on that those areas. And then we're going to come back around just a top paper towel because we want the pads to be clean. And you can see it starts to just leave a little film on the pad, which is kind of nice because it is kind of have some of it of dusty, dirty effect. So I'm gonna, it's kind of hard because the camera's in the way here for me to finish this off, but that's the general idea that we're gonna go with with the rest of the track. So I'm gonna go ahead and weather the rest of the tracks that way. And another thing we're going to do is, hopefully I can show you this, is we're going to take our, our black wash from Vallejo and we just want to highlight with a real fine brush some of the panels that are on here. Now I did thin this down slightly. let that dry. Now I'm going to do the rest of the vehicle, but I got in real close and tight so you guys could see that. We're also going to do all the vents and things like that as well. Okay, I've gone ahead and completed the uh, the build up here. Uh, first of all, we went and clear coated all of our decals in, and this is a little uh, throwback to Spaceballs, the movie, if you guys remember that from the 80s. Uh, I went and weathered all the inside of the tracks as well as the, the road wheels themselves. Now, I did do a little bit of light dry brushing on some of these panels. Hopefully you can see it in here, just to make some of the panels pop out a little bit more and a little more differentiate from each other. We also went and put a little bit of the soot on the rear pieces on there. We also and painted all the, the tail lights the red color that you need. Just kind of go around in circles here for you. And like I said, I didn't want to over weather these too much because from the pictures I saw on it, most of the pictures, yeah, they're, they're dusty, but they're not completely beat up. So I wanted to keep it more true to that. And hopefully you can also see the red that we went and painted the back of all those clear red before we popped them in. I was telling you, that's why it was another reason we wanted to leave the, the glass parts out separately. And those were easy to put in after we were done with all of our painting. So there is our completed model, and I want to thank Academy one more time for providing us with the samples for this video. And thank you very much for watching, uh, and please stay tuned because we have more videos coming.